Hello everyone and welcome to this video lecture on quantitative bioanalysis, which corresponds to chapter 7 in the reading of the course Pharmaceutical Analysis C. My name is Nico van der Medebel and next to my professorship in Groningen I'm working at PRA Health Sciences, a contract laboratory which carries out quantitative bioanalysis in support of the development of new drugs. This video lecture is divided into five parts. In this first part, I will give an introduction and discuss a number of relevant definitions and the different methodologies that are used for quantitative bioanalysis. In parts 2 and 3, I will talk about calibration and validation and quality control, which really are the basis of quantitative bioanalysis. In the fourth part, I will give an example to illustrate how this all works in practice, by focusing on the quantitative determination of risperidone in plasma. And finally, you can have a look at a short video in Dutch, which will show you how bioanalysis is being performed in a commercial laboratory. But let's start with some definitions. Bioanalysis refers to the analysis of biological material, which is collected from animals and humans. It can either be qualitative in nature or quantitative. In qualitative bioanalysis, we don't know what we're looking for, and the objective is to find out what is actually present in a sample. For example, in the case of poisoning or when unknown metabolites of a drug have to be identified. In quantitative bioanalysis, on the other hand, we usually do know which compound is present and we want to know its concentration. This means that the output of qualitative bioanalysis typically is the name of a compound, whereas for quantitative bioanalysis, it is a number. For quantitative bioanalysis that support drug development by the pharmaceutical industry, analyses are often performed in compliance with scientific regulations. Therefore, this work is often called regulated bioanalysis, and the contents of this video lecture all refer to this type of work. These regulations have been developed by different drug registration authorities around the world, and they are meant to make sure that the results that they have to review are reliable and scientifically meaningful. We will discuss a number of important aspects of regulated bioanalysis in the next parts of this video lecture. Key terms are validation, quality control and terms like precision, accuracy and selectivity of a method, and stability of compounds. Several bioanalytical guidelines have been issued by countries like Japan, Ch China and Brazil. The most important ones are those of the American FDA, for registration of drugs in the United States, and the European Medicines Agency for approval in the European Union. It is important to distinguish regulated bioanalysis according to scientific standards from bioanalysis by good laboratory practice, which can also be seen as a sort of regulated work. GOP regulations have nothing to do with science, but they are guidelines to ensure that results have been produced in a way that can be reconstructed and verified. So the key words here are documentation and traceability. I will not further discuss GOP regulated bioanalysis in this course, but I will focus only on scientifically regulated bioanalysis. The concept of method validation is very important in current bioanalysis. Validation is a thorough demonstration of the reliability of a method. If a method is properly validated, the concentration result that is obtained accurately reflects what was present in the sample at the time of sample collection. Validation of a method always takes place before samples from a clinical study are analyzed, because we don't want to risk obtaining results that are not reliable. And once a method has been validated, it can be applied to analyze study samples, and during the analysis it has to be continuously demonstrated that the method is still reliable. That is called quality control. It can actually be seen as a limited ongoing validation during the actual analysis of study samples. Another definition is that of analyte. This refers to the compound that we are quantifying. It can occur naturally in the sample, and then it's called a biotic or endogenous analyte. Examples are hormones, enzymes and other biomarkers. When it's not naturally present in a sample, an analyte is called a xenobiotic or exogenous compound, and most drugs belong to this class. 
An example that will return several times in this course um, is, uh, uh, as an initial illustration is the anti-schizophrenic drug risperidone. For quantitative bioanalysis, it is essential to have a good reference substance of an analyte. That's usually a powder or a solution. Such a reference substance is used to prepare samples with exactly known concentrations, such as calibrators and QC samples. The purity of a reference substance has to be known, and it's usually indicated on a certificate of analysis, such as is shown here for risperidone. The concentration of an analyte in a study sample is determined by reference to a set of calibrators, which all contain different but known concentrations of the analyte. A set of these calibrators is called a calibration curve or a calibration line. A quality control or QC sample is also prepared by adding a known concentration of the reference substance to a sample. These QC samples are analyzed together with the study samples and their concentrations are also derived from the calibration curve. We know what the result should be, so QCs can be used to determine if the method gives reliable results. The type of sample which is being analyzed is called the matrix. It can either be a fluid, such as blood or urine, or it can be solid, such as basically every tissue in a human or animal body. This picture here shows that plasma and serum are by far the most frequently analyzed matrices. At PRA they account for about 75% of everything we analyze. And as a reminder, the difference between plasma and serum is that serum is obtained by letting blood clot and then remove the blood cells, while for plasma, uh, blood is collected in a tube with an anticoagulant, such as heparin uh, or EDTA. In that case the blood does not, does not clot, so after removing the blood cells the clotting protein, proteins are still present in the plasma. To prepare samples with a known concentration, it's important to have a matrix that doesn't contain the analytes of interest. That is called blank matrix. For xenobiotics, such as most drugs, it's usually easy to obtain by collecting it from someone who has not been dosed with the drug. This is known as authentic matrix. For endogenous analytes, blank authentic matrix usually doesn't exist because there is almost always a low concentration of the analyte present in the matrix. Therefore, an alternative has to be used, which is called a proxy or a surrogate matrix. It can be as simple as a buffer or a protein solution, but it can also be the authentic matrix from which the analyte has been removed, for example by stripping with active charcoal. In quantitative bioanalysis, analytes can be divided into two major classes, small and large molecules. Most drugs currently are small molecules that can be synthesized in the lab and that have a molecular weight of below 2000 daltons. Many important endogenous compounds, by the way, uh, that are routinely measured in clinical research, uh, such as steroids and neurotransmitters, are also small molecules. The uh, smaller molecules are typically quantified using liquid chromatography with mass spectrometric detection, or LCMS. Here you see a picture of a small molecule drug. It's of course risperidone again. And large molecules, uh, they are rapidly increasing in importance. They are produced by biotechnological methods, such as by bacteria or human cell lines, and their molecular weight is above 10,000 daltons. This class includes biopharmaceuticals, such as monoclonal therapeutic antibodies, and protein-based biomarkers. The golden standard for analysis of large molecules is the lichen binding assay, such as ELISA. And this figure uh, of the biopharmaceutical trastuzumab clearly shows you the enormous complexity of large molecules compared to small molecules. And also that the, the analysis is usually a lot less straightforward. Thanks for your attention. I hope to meet you in part two of the lecture where we will discuss calibration or how unknown concentrations in a biological sample are determined.